So we're going to dig into this. First is the Lord. Just these first two words. The Lord. In the Hebrew, it's Jehovah. What we were just talking about. Jehovah Jireh. He says, okay, let's first just talk about Jehovah. Big G God, creator of the entire universe. The one back in Genesis 1 who just spoke. And everything that is natural came into existence from the supernatural. So let's start with who are we talking about in Psalm 23? We're talking about Jehovah, the big God. I don't know, sometimes it's helpful just to realize how small we are, that the world does not revolve around us, that everything, this is all about Him, Jehovah. The Creator, like if the Earth's axis was tilted just slightly, we all die. We couldn't exist. We're like there's so much fine tuning. The way He perfectly created the universe, but if if the world is fine, like is ten percent faster, or or if we were just three tenths of one percent closer to the sun or further, like we couldn't exist. Everything is just exactly fine-tuned the way it needed to be. An atheist scientist named Roger Penrose did a study. He calculated the likelihood of the universe having such a precise uh, design. And in his calculations, with all the constants that needed to be perfectly in place for life to exist, he calculated that it was a one into the power of 10, to the power of 10, to the power of 123, some astronomical number that we can't even really name. The likelihood that the universe would have such precise design. It would be more likely to win the lottery 10,000 times in a row and be struck by lightning every time we won than for the Earth to be this finely tuned. Science Kid has, has, has learned this, but they can't necessarily explain like this big God that we know about the Genesis several thousand years ago. They said, "Yeah, He spoke it to me." I read this uh, this journal article um, by um, it was in uh, a Stanford journal article. I want to read this to you because I just thought this was fascinating. This was a conclusion talking about how improbable it is. In the fine tuning of the universe and our existence, it says, even if fine tuned conditions are improbable in some substantive sense, it might be wisest to regard them as primitive coincidences, which we have to accept without resorting to such specular responses as divine design or in the multiverse. So you here you have basically science saying, hey, the world as we know it shouldn't exist. Like, it's impossible that it exists with such fine-tuning and such design. But, rather than make this leap of faith to say that there's a creator behind it, let's take this, he says wise, I thought that was an interesting term. Let's take this other leap of faith to say maybe there's a multiverse or maybe it just happened. We put in all the facts to say it's impossible. But we don't want to take that step. No, we know, we know the Lord. The Lord. He is behind it all. This is who we're starting with here. The Lord. Next word is. The Lord is. Not is going to be. Not was. You have a Savior. You have Jehovah who is present. Who is here. Who is now here? This is who we're talking about. It's not some distant thing which gets into the next one. The Lord is by. This big God who created this grand universe is very personal. The Lord is mine. He is with you, and He knows you better than you know you. He loves you more than you love you. 
He is mine. Jesus said it like this. We talked about this last week, talking about the vine. He's the source. He said, remain in me. Remain in me, and I'll remain in you. My desire is that you would produce much fruit in your lives. But you can't produce any fruit on your own. Separate from me, you can't. So he said, let's abide here. Now, I love what Jesus says. He says in John 15, now you are my friends. Oh, isn't that so nice? Friend. You are a friend of God. You are so much value. You have value to Him. He loves you. He's, you're not a, a slave. Just, oh, do this, do this, do this, do this. No, God, this God, Yahweh, loves you. He is my friend. You are my friend. Since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. I couldn't hold that out. I love that part. Can we talk about love those animals? They're, they're, you, when you think about Christianity, some of us say rules, 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 rules. There's all these rules. Do this. Don't do that. Do this. And if you don't, God's got you. Know, he's just ready to strike you down. No. He's got, there's one rule. One rule. One command. Love. Love people. Unconditionally. As I have loved you. That's the command. Everything falls underneath that. Jesus says, you are my friends. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, I don't know anything about shepherding. And I'm going to say, most of you all do not either. We did not grow up uh, in the fields uh, shepherding sheep. So, commentators that I look into, we have to kind of, you know, look in and see, well, how do we shepherd? What does this mean? There's a whole lot of meaning in this. And it's I'll give you four D's. One is the shepherd was a deliverer. He was a deliverer. Now, if you could be any animal on the planet, what would it be? Now, you can just shout it out. If you could choose to be any animal on the planet, what would what would it be? Dinosaur, dog, lion, a cat. Who is that? A cat. <laughs> What else? Did somebody else say cat? Okay, we can't be friends. But <laughs> a horse. All right. We we all got to be the one's horse. Is it a, a giraffe? That's what our answer is. A giraffe. Um, it's an inside joke. Um, nobody says sheep. <laughs> nobody says I want to be a sheep. But it's important for our context. Sheep are not glamorous. If I was shooting for other things, I would be a lion, a tiger, a shark, an eagle. I don't want to be a sheep. They're vulnerable. They're not smart. But he says the Lord is my shepherd, and so we are his sheep. The sheep, I, I, they follow their cravings. They just follow their instincts. They see something shiny. I'm like, oh, look at that shiny over there. I want that. And then they're over here. Like, oh, I want this. And they're, 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 they, 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 they go wherever they want. They're not necessarily smart. And, and they're always in, in need of help. It's kind of like, I, I kind of, as I was coming this day, I love my boys. I love my kids. I love being a dad. We took a, a Father's Day trip to Albuquerque this week to go watch the ice and coke skate. And then go play some pop pop. I was, I was all excited. We get to the isotopes cave, ready to walk in, and my son, whom I love, I didn't bring my shoes. Where are your shoes? Why didn't you bring your shoes? How did you get in the car without your shoes? We're going over there. Like, so I'm piggybacking them around, um, carrying my, my nine-year-old around, because, you know, and then he's shouting at everyone we pass by, saying, my dad's so much fun! And he's just... <laughs> You know, whatever, whatever. I love it. I love it. And as much as I want to get frustrated, God has me studying in Psalm 23 and says, My church is too. <laughs> and you are so prone to doing some dumb things. Where you would shake your head. Now, God's not here to shame you. As your deliverer, Jesus would tell a story, a parable, and say, Hey, there was a lost sheep one time. 
there's a lost sheep. And I left the 99, and you stay right there, I left the 99 to go find that one. Because it was worth it. Because I love it. I'm never giving up on it. Alright, he is our deliverer. So my goal, asking the question of like, hey, what animal would you want to be? And he's saying, I'm sheep. Well, if I'm a sheep, I want to be a good shepherd. And, and I, want to, I want to listen to my shepherd. I want to be close to my shepherd. He's also another knee of gentle bird. All right? Take a look. He's got that staff, the shepherding staff. So he's going to get that hook and be like, eh, over here, you know? And he's not trying to be mean. The God disciplines, just like Jesus said in John 15, my father, who is the gardener, all right, trying to give you as many illustrations about who this God is as I can. He says it's like a gardener. Anything with gardener is going to prove. Anything that's not bearing fruit because he wants fruit, he's going to prove some things sometimes. That pruning is not fun. And it would almost look like from the outside of the end that he's doing damage, that he's purposely hurting them. But why is he pruning? Why would, he, why would anyone prune? Because they know pruning will produce more fruit. Will get us the results that we're looking for. God is lovingly taking care of you. So when the discipline comes, he knows, hey, sheep, you're going off. You saw something shiny. That's not what I have to do. Come over here, over here, over here. We do the same thing as moms and dads with our kids who we love. Hey, no, you're not track over here. That's not why. That's not a good way to try to help you out in certain situations. So which we as kids, we all we're like our we're like teenagers, we all say, don't don't tell me what to do, I'm do my own thing, right? We all did that, we all did that, but on the other side we know what we're trying to do. Number three is the defender. Alright? As a shepherd, they were also a defender. So he's got that sack, the, the shepherd sack, like the bowling and I got bone sacks here. Like he's ready to go. There's no enemy. There's no enemy that is going to snatch you out of God's hands. He's got you. Now the enemy, he will come after you. He will try to tempt you, distract you, discourage you, get you far away from God as he can so you cannot produce fruit. But, but with God on your side, as your shepherd, he was going to protect his flock at all costs. So he would all, I mean, the best way to stay protected was to stay close. Who is the enemy going to get? The one that's not planted close. The one that's astray. The one that's far off. If I'm a good sheep, and I want to be a good sheep, and I feel like I'm away from God right now, the best thing you can do is get yourself right into the middle of the flock, close to the shepherd, alone, planted, July 1st through July 31st. We're going to plant ourselves in with the rest of the flock, and we're going to get into the woods next. The fourth D is the director. He is the director. He said, I am a good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. With so many competing voices in our lives, which one is the most dominant for you? Which voice is the most dominant for you? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And we have things that are competing for our wants. I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And the, the challenging question I want to close out with today before we jump into the baptism is, is the Lord your shepherd? Is he, the Lord is my shepherd? Is he your shepherd? And if you want to be real, maybe if the question is, I don't know how to answer that. The question may be asked is, do I have a lot of wants? If I have a lot of wants, the Lord may not be my shepherd. I'm chasing after, I'm striving after, I want the success, I want the career, I want the popularity, I will, I will do what I want, when I want, how I want, where I want, and no one's going to tell me anything different. And that is how the dominating voice in my life is my wants. He may not be my shepherd because he is my shepherd. I shall not want. I have wants. I have wants. But I'm going to bring it to my shepherd, to my Savior. 
and I'm going to trust him. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me because I'm part of I want it that he makes me because none of us know how to rest. Sometimes you might get sick or something like that. He's like, all right, fine. You're going to rest. The body needs it because you're that. No, he knows the environments that you need to refresh your soul. He's a good shepherd. And he's going to take you, hey, this is going to feed you. This is going to fill you up. Even though I, I, I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and his act, they comfort me. Now listen, he doesn't say, follow me and I'm your shepherd, you're never going to walk through. He doesn't say, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it will happen. You know this, because you've been in some valleys. You've been in some, but he's with you and he's present. He's saying, how pleasant I am God who is with you now. In those moments, in those hours. That's where growth, that's where maturity happens in his presence. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint me with oil, head of my oil, my cup of oil. I don't have time, Lord. This is so good. I, a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Just think about that. So many of us, we have this blessing, this, this blessing that's there for us in the presence of our enemies. And the challenge here is what do you focus on? I'll focus on my enemies, the critics, the ones who want to who doubt and, and, and who have said this about me or whatever. And if I got this whole blessing that I'm missing. He says, You've got a blessing right here in front of you in the presence of your enemies. Focus on the blessing. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, for eternity. This is the God who's with you, your shepherd. To give you a little bit of hope as we close out, and we're going to jump in the back to it. David wrote this song. David was a shepherd. The commentator said he wrote this later on in life. He did not write this while he was a shepherd, although he kind of knew this imagery. David later on in life, perhaps he wrote this when his son Absalom was trying to kill him. On Father's Day. Oh, that's a great Father's Day. That's my son trying to kill me. This is David who's right saying, even in the worst of circumstances that you're facing right now, even in the hard moments of life, Kathleen and John, you know this, you're going to face some hard moments. I want you to know that the Lord is your shepherd. He is with you, who loves you, who is guiding you. You can trust him. That's what he's trying to say. Wake up! Wake up! You can trust me. I am Jehovah Jireh, provider. I know it doesn't make sense. I know the circumstances around doesn't look like it. Will you follow me, Chief? Will you take your next step with me? Because I'm with you all the way. As we go to take, as we go to take baptism, I got to show one baptism verse. This is what Jesus goes to be baptized. Jesus goes, he gets baptized, and. Uh, when he comes up out of the water, the Father gives us a glimpse again of who he is. It says, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lighting on him. And a voice came from heaven and said, this is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. I love this because that last part, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Up to this point, what had Jesus done in his ministry? He didn't do nothing. He hadn't accomplished his vision. He hadn't healed anyone that we all have. Hadn't done anything miraculous. Yet the Heavenly Father looks at him at that moment and says, This is my son whom I love. He's saying the same thing about you today. You don't have to earn it with God. This is grace. When we celebrate baptism, you're going to hear the stories here in a few seconds. When we celebrate, we're not celebrating any achievement on our part. Hey, this is what I've done. Look at how great I am or anything like this. It's all revolves around God and Jesus. Jesus is the one we're celebrating. We're celebrating the work of Jesus in our lives. He saved us. And so baptism is simply a symbol to say, this is what God has done in my life. He saved me. He is my Lord. He is my shepherd. I'm going to follow him no matter what. 
as best as I can, as best as I know how. And that's what I'm committing. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the message today. I hope you felt inspired to take your next step of faith with Jesus. Just a couple next steps that you can take coming out of this. One, leave a review or a comment or share this message. That really does spread the message further and faster when you do that. Secondly, if there's a next step that you need to take coming out of this, head on over to our website, click get involved and let us know exactly how you can take your next step. We would love to partner with you in that. And finally, if you have been impacted in a positive way through our ministries or your family has been impacted in a positive way through our ministries, Ministries, go on over to our website and click give. And if you want to partner with us financially, that would be huge in getting the message of Jesus out through our ministries. Thank you again for stopping by the podcast. Have a wonderful week. God bless.